Hello, my name is Joe Hoyle, speaking to you from the University of Richmond, and I'm the author of your financial accounting textbook, and we are looking at the statement of cash flows. As you probably already know, the statement of cash flows has three sections to it. Investing activities, things which are not part of day-to-day -day operations, but involve assets. Financing activities, things that are not part of day-to-day -day operations, but involve liabilities or stockholders' equity and then operating activities. In my own class, we will look at companies and we will try to determine whether they get most of their cash from investing activities, most of their cash from financing activities, or most of their cash from operating activities. Not surprisingly, once a business has been going for a while, if it is a su successful business, they should be getting quite a bit of cash from operating activities. If a business cannot get money from operating activities, there's always the question as to whether it should be in business. So if you're looking at a company, one of the primary things to study is to look at the net income to see how much the company is growing in net assets, but also to look at operating activities to see how they're doing as far as the amount of cash they're bringing in. Now there can be differences between those two numbers that are quite interesting and quite significant. Your uncle brings up a very troublesome situation here. If this goes on for long, this is something the company really needs to think about. They seem to be doing better. They're selling more, they're buying more, things seem to be going well, the net income is holding up well. But their cash reserves are dwindling. Why is their cash reserves dwindling? Now there are possibly things in their investing or financing activities that are simply pulling the cash away. For example, maybe they're paying a huge dividend and that's causing the company to lose its cash. Or maybe they're pouring money into new buildings and equipment. That's also possible. But both of those simply cannot go on forever. If your cash reserves are dwindling, you have to make sure that you simply don't burn through all your money and run out. So you look to see why is, what is going on and why is the cash not staying strong. But they kind of imply here that the operating activities are not doing as well as they would typically want. Why does that happen? How does a company make strong sales but not have more cash? Well, this is one of the things that you want to look at when you look at the operating activity section there's a couple of obvious possible problems. One is that they are making lots of sales, but they're selling to people who aren't going to pay them. So their accounts receivable are going way up, and they're basically sacrificing, they're getting growth by sacrificing collections. So if you've got a company that's making a lot of sales, but their accounts receivable are increasing more than you would anticipate, they've probably made some kind of change. They're either giving credit to people who are not quite as credit worthy, or they're not making their collections as strong as they used to. I always tell my own students that looking at a set of financial statements is like looking at a puzzle. You're not even sure what you're looking for, but you're looking to see what clues you might have. So if net income goes up, but cash flows from operations do not go up, perhaps that means that you're making sales to people who are not going to pay you as quickly as they should, and in subsequent years, you're gonna have huge amounts of bad debt expense. That's certainly a possibility. Another possibility is that you're buying lots and lots and lots of inventory, that you're furnishing or you're creating those sales by buying a lot of inventory and you don't need that much inventory. For example, if your sales are going up by 10%, but your inventory is going up by 20%, you're pouring your money into inventory that may be getting old, or it may be something that you can't sell. Maybe there's a reason that your sales are not going up as much as your inventory balances are going up. That's the kind of information that financial statements show to you. If you go back to the early chapters in this textbook, one of the things that I indicated 
was that financial accounting provides a transparent look into the company so that you can see what's really happening so you can make good business decisions about that company. You have to know though how accounting works. A statement of cash flows, for example, if you know how to look at it, can give you a transparent vision into the operation of the company and maybe help you to ascertain its financial health and its future profitability. And that allows you to be a great decision maker. If the net income goes up, but the operating cash flows do not go up as well, that indicates the money is going someplace. It's not just vanishing, at least I hope not vanishing. So what you want to do is to look for, why is that cash not going up? Are you making financing decisions? Are you making investing decisions? Are you making sales to people who are not going to pay? Are you buying too much inventory? All of those are possibilities. And those are possibilities of things that could be corrected. Your uncle is worried. Your uncle is concerned here. You may be able to help him see what mistakes are being made. If you say you're buying inventory too quickly, that's a good way that cash goes down and he can make a more efficient operation by slowing that down. If you say you're getting too many sales from people who are not paying, then that again is interesting information that can help him to make changes. Accounting can prove both internally and externally to be a great help in operating successfully and efficiently. You have completed this textbook. I hope that it has helped you to understand not only how financial accounting works, but how financial accounting can be beneficial to you so that your time in this course has been worth what you have invested. So that as you leave college and as you go forward in this world, that you can be a successful, working, satisfied adult business person. And if that happens, then the work we have put in is very much worth it. Have a great time. I hope the course has been the favorite this semester.